In this screencast, we will discuss the trade-offs that we make when optimizing our MRI images. Realize that you pay for everything and there's no free lunch. Ideally, we would like to have a MRI image that's high resolution, that has really good signal to noise ratio, and we can acquire it very rapidly. But we have to strike a balance. We have to make sure that the images are diagnostic and we can interpret them to get the information out of them that we need to make a diagnosis. But we also have to realize there are economics involved and we can't have 7T scanners and we can't spend two hours acquiring our image. The basic trade-offs are if you want more resolution, you're gonna either pay for it by having lower signal to noise or by increasing your acquisition time. If you want better signal to noise, you're gonna have to lower your resolution or increase your acquisition time. And if you wanna cut your acquisition time, which is what we're all under pressure to do, you're gonna to have to sacrifice signal to noise or resolution. So let's focus on resolution initially. You can improve your resolution by either sacrificing your signal to noise, by having a smaller field of view, or by taking more time to acquire your image. So let's look at an example. Here we have four different images of the knee. In this example, we have cropped some of the image. So you can see field of view 32 centimeters, 16, 8 centimeters, and 12 centimeters. In each case, we're not changing the matrix, but we're decreasing the field of view over time. By decreasing the field of view from 32 to 16 to 12 to 8, we get progressively better resolution. We also get increased noise. Now, in this example, the noise is best seen really in this corner here, the little white specks, but in general, the little dots all through the image are gonna be noise. I would argue that the trade-off for improved resolution outweighs the increased noise in this image, and I would much rather have a small field of view to evaluate this knee. You could take a different approach in which instead of increasing, I mean decreasing your field of view, you increase your matrix size. But to increase your matrix size, you're gonna have to increase your acquisition time. There's gonna be more lines of case space in the phase encoded direction, and those additional lines of phase encoded case space are gonna require additional time. And this is that example. So same knee, we're gonna keep the field of view exactly the same, and we are gonna increase our matrix. So you can see that our resolution improves from the left-hand image here down to the highest matrix image here, okay? And we do have increasing noise from one image to the next, but again, that improved resolution, I think, is worth the trade-off for having increased noise, which to me does not greatly degrade this image. Let's think about signal to noise. So how do we improve signal to noise by sacrificing resolution or time? Increasing signal is going to increase noise. You have to double the signal to increase your signal to noise ratio uh, by 1.4. So your signal to noise ratio is really gonna only increase by the square root of how much additional signal you create. So improving signal to noise is very expensive. When we think about what generates our signal to noise, our images are displayed as pixels, but really they are a two dimensional representation of a voxel or a volume of space containing protons. 
as we increase our voxel size, our matrix size will decrease and our slice thickness will increase. Increasing that slice thickness drops our resolution, but each voxel now contains more protons. Because each voxel contains more protons, there's more spins within an individual voxel and therefore more signal. The problem with increasing voxel size and increasing slice thickness is we have more volume averaging. And let's look at this graphical representation. So here we have a circle, okay? And if we sample that circle with high resolution, okay, and low signal and high noise, this is what our circle looks like, okay? So it's a pretty bad image, even though it's high resolution. Now, if we go with a high resolution and high signal, representation of that circle, okay, the noise is not as apparent, and we now get a square representation of our circle. Now, we could argue which of these is a better representation, but in this case, I think I would sacrifice resolution for more signal, because that square is a better representation than this noisy high resolution image. So how do we improve signal to noise ratio? The best way to improve signal to noise ratio is by optimizing what coil you're using and coil positioning. Because the strength of your radio frequency signal drops off rapidly as you move away from your source of your signal. You can increase your number of averages, which means increasing your average means you just acquire each image twice, or you get twice the amount of data to increase to improve your signal. Getting twice the data takes twice the time, and you only get an improvement by the square root of two. So an increase signal to noise ratio of 1.4 takes twice as much time. You can also increase your field strength, so that's why we develop higher field strength scanners going from 1.5 to 3 Tesla. You have an improvement in your signal to noise ratio by 1.4, but you do increase the number of artifacts that will be created at a higher field strength. You can also decrease your bandwidth, which will decrease your gradient, and that will improve your signal to noise ratio but it does cause increased chemical shift artifacts and it increases your acquisition time. Let's think about acquisition. Phase encoded steps cost time. For each line of K space, we're going to require a different phase gradient and therefore we need a separate RF pulse to create each line of K space. Frequency encoded steps are, are almost free because all we do is change either how much of an echo we sample or how rapidly we sample that echo. So we can change our frequency encoded uh, field of view or resolution just by changing our sample rate and the time or extent that we sample the echo. In general, we often reduce our acquisition time by reducing the number of sequences that we have, by accepting lower quality images, or by new advanced case space filling techniques. But for acquisition time, remember, the phase encoded direction, field of view, or resolution costs time. Frequency encoded, resolution, or field of view is nearly free because we don't have to generate a new echo, we just have to sample that echo differently. Here's an example where in the pelvis, we would ha change the direction of our frequency and phase encoded gradient. So we this first image is going to have 
a square matrix here, okay, so a similar phase and frequency encoded matrix. And we can, when we have a rectangular matrix, we tend to make the frequency encoded direction along the longer axis of our rectangle and our phase encoded direction smaller or shorter axis. You can also make a much smaller field of view to reduce your acquisition time, but you do increase your noise. And if you look over in the corner of this image, you're going to see more little specks and dots, which represent noise because we know there's not many protons there as compared to right there. Okay. Smaller field of view, smaller matrix, but the same spatial resolution will cause you to have more noise. Your long axis should always be your frequency encoded direction, short axis phase encoded direction. Another way that we can reduce acquisition time is with turbo or fast spin echo imaging. What this allows us to do is generate multiple echoes with one RF excitation. So instead of having to wait the full TR between echo, each individual echo, we generate multiple echoes from one RF pulse and we can fill multiple lines of case space. So we generate an RF pulse, we expose everything to a phase encoded gradient, we generate an echo, and we fill a line of case space. We then do a 180 degree refocusing pulse, another phase encoded gradient, we generate another echo, and that echo allows us to fill another line of case space, so on and so forth. And with some of the modern techniques, such as turbo spin echo, we can sometimes fill all of case space for a single slice with a single acquisition, which is represented right here. Okay. One important thing to note that in this instance, our TE is going to be dependent on which echo goes into the central line of case space. Okay, because that central line of case space contributes an outsized impact on our contrast, which echo we use to fill in that central line will determine what our TE is. And if we wanted it to be weighted differently, we could fill use this echo to fill in case space, and it would double the TE. Another thing that we do to reduce our acquisition time is what we call a partial Fourier acquisition. So when we talked about case space, remember that the frequency and phase, the frequency that this voxel experiences compared to this voxel is the same, and the phase encoded it, number for that voxel is equal and opposite. Okay. And again, this one experiences the same frequency encoding as this one, but equal and opposite phase encoding. Because of that, k-space is going to be symmetric. And because k-space is symmetric, we don't have to acquire all of the data. What we can do is acquire a little more than half the data and then use a computer to model what data should be in this red square. And that allows us to acquire all of k-space with a single RF pulse. And that's called a single shot technique. Single shot turbo spin echo imaging. So partial Fourier or half Fourier okay, acquisition single shot turbo spin echo. Another technique is echo planar imaging. In echo planar imaging, instead of having a fixed phase and frequency encoded gradient, you are going to fluctuate the phase and frequency encoded gradients throughout your acquisition, generating multiple echoes and rapidly filling case space. 
Getting into the nuts and bolts of that is beyond what we need to do for this screencast, but realize echo planar imaging is a way to acquire a large amount of data in a rapid time, and it's frequently used with diffusion weighted imaging. In summary, if you want better resolution, you have to decrease your signal to noise ratio or increase your acquisition time or decrease your field of view. To increase your signal of noise, you have to sacrifice resolution. You have to increase your acquisition time, double your field strength, or increase your field of view. Increasing field of view reduces resolution or increases acquisition time. And increasing your field of view often increases your signal to noise. To decrease acquisition time, you, can, you have to sacrifice signal to noise, resolution, or field of view. There's no free lunch. There's a balance to all the optimization that goes on.